Numbers 33, let's begin reading verse number 51. This is God speaking to Moses. He says, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto thee, When you are passed over Jordan into the land of Canaan, then ye shall drive out all the inhabitants of the land from before you, and destroy all their pictures, destroy all their molten images, and quite pluck down their high places, uh, and ye shall dispossess the inhabitants of the land and dwell therein, for I have given, it, uh, given you the land to possess it, and ye shall divide the land by lot for an inheritance among your families, and to the more ye shall give the more inheritance, and to the fewer ye shall give the less inheritance. Every man's inheritance shall be in the place where his lot falleth, According to the tribes of your fathers ye shall inherit it. Inherit. But if ye will not drive out the inhabitants of uh, the land from before you, and it shall come, then it shall come to pass that those which ye let remain of them shall be pricks in your eyes and thorns in your sides, ye sh and shall vex you in the land wherein ye dwell. Moreover, it shall come to pass that I shall do unto you as I thought to do unto them. Let's pray. Father, we love you. Thank you for the good testimonies. Thank you for uh, the good singing. Thank you for the good word of God. Thank you for being a good God. Now, I know we've been here for a little while now, Lord, so please help us, refresh us, illuminate our minds to truth, edify your people, use this unworthy vessel. We'll bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Let me show you a couple of things from these verses. We notice the instruction in verse number 52, where the Lord says, You'll drive out the inhabitants, uh, you'll destroy their pictures, destroy their molten images, uh, pluck down their high places. God instructs them in verse 52. Uh, in verse 53, He deals with uh, inhabiting the land. Uh, he said, Drive out the inhabitants from the land, which, uh, I mean, verse 50, 53, and ye shall dispossess the inhabitants of the land. Dispossess means to put out of possession by any Means, He said, uh, get rid of them by any means uh, and dwell therein. Uh, verse number 52, he instructs them. Verse 53, he tells them they'll be inhabitants. Uh, and verse 54, we find they'll have an inheritance. Uh, and he tells them to divide it up. The bigger families and the bigger tribes get more and the lesser get less. Uh, but they'll get all according to their fathers. So we find all these things in these verses. Uh, but then a charge is set before them. They are given a choice. They can either have victory, verse 51 says, when you are passed over Jordan into Canaan land. A lot of people want to type Canaan land as heaven. That's not heaven, friends. They still had battles to fight. They had giants to face. Uh, they had problems they would uh, 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 face. They'd have fears in their life. Canaan is not a picture of heaven. Uh, Canaan is a picture of victorious Christian living. Uh, 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 the book of Joshua and Canaan land in the Old Testament, uh, my dear friends, is uh, uh, what the Ephesians in the New Testament is to the local church. It's a place of victory. Uh, and they can have victory, or if they don't do what God says, uh, we find in verse 55, he closes it out and says, and shall vex you in the land wherein you dwell. You can have victory, or you can have vexation. Can I say it's still true tonight? We can live in victory. Thanks be unto God which gives us a victory through Jesus Christ our Lord. We can have victory in our daily walk, our daily lives. Uh, we can have victory in everything we face. Uh, I've got new good news for you. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Uh, hey, he's already overcome the world, overcome death, overcome the flesh, uh, overcome the devil. He's done all those things that we can overcome in Christ. Uh, you can walk around defeated if you want to, but you don't have to. Uh, you can have victory tonight uh, or you can sit around like a dot on the log and be vexed it's up to you uh, I choose victory I don't know about you I don't want to be a sourpuss huh but can I say I was reading the book of Joshua and as I was reading the book of Joshua God started putting all these thoughts in my mind when God tells him in verse 52 look what he says drive out all the inhabitants and then he says, destroy their pictures, destroy their molten images, and quite pluck down their high places. I'm reminded, Brother Josh, that God is intolerant of some things. 
Now, unlike modern preachers and TV preachers that want to paint a picture that God's always lovey-dovey and God's your big brother upstairs and, and God is for you and He's going to give you uh, everything uh, you need and then some, you send Him a dollar, He'll give you 10000 all this garbage. Uh, they paint God out to be not what God is. Can I say above all, God is holy. And He's intolerant of some things. Can I say He's intolerant of sin? Never ever get it in your mind that God accepts sin in any way, shape, or form. God hates sin. Uh, sin's what hung Jesus on the cross, friends. Uh, God is against sin in every form and fashion. Uh, somewhere along the line, we got it in our minds, there are certain sins uh, that are horrible and God's against, but, but there's other sins that God puts up with. Uh, can I say that a little white lie is just as black and dark and filthy uh, in the eyes of God as any other sin you can think of? Uh, and God hates all that sin. Uh, he's angry with the wicked every Every day uh, because God is not tolerant of sin uh, somewhere we got in our minds well if I just miss church here God will, God will accept that no oh if I just do this God he's okay with it nope he's intolerant of sin he said drive out all of them and destroy everything they got everything they worship everything they've looked to, everything they've embraced, everything they've taught and thought of as a God, destroy it. That's what he said. Right. And I say this, he's intolerant of, intolerant of sacrilege. God doesn't accept any worship other than true worship that is in spirit and in truth. Right. In the local church. Now, I make people mad when I make statements like this, but oh well, I'm in the business of making mad this last couple of weeks. Can I say this? If it bypasses the local church, it's wrong. I don't care how much money it brings in. I don't care how churchy it looks. Uh, I don't care how many t uh, people they say have gotten born again and gotten saved. Uh, I don't care how many uh, ministries they've started with it. Uh, if it bypasses the local church, God's not in it. Mark it down. Matter of fact, I'm even against these guys that have such and such ministries. And they usually got their name and their picture on it. You know what ministry God's for? The local church. He's against it all. Any sacrilege. Anything that gives man credit, God's against it. Now that's going to upset some, Brother Ray. Billy Graham Ministries. God wasn't in all that mess. God wasn't in shutting down local churches so you can fill up a coliseum so you can be on TV and Billy Graham get credit for it. I remember when he came to Cincinnati, they called and asked if we'd shut down and, have, and babysit their children. I said, no, we're going to have preaching. Hmm? All you need to know about Billy Graham, there's a book that Jack Chick put out. You can order it on Chick, uh, 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 his website. It's called Billy Graham and His Friends. It's 673 pages. All you ever got to know about anything is just follow the money. How come Billy Graham can print Bibles in China, but we send Bibles over there and the missionaries get arrested for it? Hmm? Hmm? And by the way, Billy Graham got down and kissed the Pope's ring. You'll never catch me in the presence of the Pope unless he invites me to come preach the gospel to him. Can I say this? Billy Graham said there is no flames in hell. Jesus said there was. I believe what Jesus said. When that mess come out, uh, 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 the, that new modern translation of the Bible, the good news for a modern man, Billy Graham endorsed it. Uh, uh, he said, that's the one. No, this is the one, the one God wrote. Uh, uh, you say, Brother Doug, why are you picking up Billy Graham? Jesus named names, Paul named names. Uh, I'm saying anything that bypasses the local church is wrong. Uh, by the way, Billy Graham made all his money on Southern Baptists. Did you know he wasn't a Southern Baptist? He was a Presbyterian. Amen. You're welcome. That didn't cost you anything either. He said, well, he started out right. All I know is the end product wasn't very good. It's not how you start, it's how you finish, friend. 
Can I say God's intolerant of sin. He's intolerant of sacrilege. That really made some mad on that, Brother Donald. But can I say this? He's intolerant of sharing His glory. He don't share His glory with anybody. He is the glory. Hmm? And to God be the glory. Now the fruition of all this text that I just made you mad from, you know, God told them what to do. Go into the land of Canaan. Go in there and destroy and, and, and dispossess all that happens and destroy all their, their, their worship junk and all that. Get rid of it all. Well, it comes to fruition in, in Joshua chapter 11, verse 18. The Bible said Joshua made war a long time with those kings. There was not a city that made peace with the children of Israel, say the Hivites and the inhabitants of Gibeah. All other they took in battle. For it was of the Lord to harden their hearts that they, may sh that they should come against Israel in battle, that he might destroy them utterly, and that they might, might have no favor, but that he might destroy them as the Lord commanded Moses. And at that uh, time came Joshua and cut off the Anakims from the mountains, uh, from Hebron and from Deber and from Manan, uh, and from the mountains of Judah and from the mountains of Israel. Joshua destroyed them utterly with their cities. So Joshua took the whole land according to all the Lord said unto Moses, and Joshua gave for an inheritance unto Israel according to their divisions by their tribes, and the land rested for more. Well, I got to reading all that, and I was reading about all them people getting slain and all them cities getting destroyed and all that they'd done there. And I got to reading about them and not showing any mercy. And can I say that If you do not rightly divide the Bible and you become a Bible corrector, you'll do like the Catholic Church did throughout the Dark Ages. They'd go into villages all across Europe and say, either you submit to the Catholic Church or we'll destroy your village. And they got justification saying, well, Israel went in and destroyed everybody. Israel did that because God told them to. God didn't tell the Catholic Church to do that. Uh, the Catholic Church was to believe, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and get saved. Can I say that it's estimated somewhere between 6 million and 10 million of our forefathers of the faith was destroyed by the Catholic Church because they would not submit to infant baptism? But today, we have the same charge that they had in numbers. What's the charge? We can have victory or we can have vexation. But we're in a different warfare. The Bible says, Ephesians 6, 12, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but, our, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. I appreciate the fact that you got mad. I am your nephew. I'm cut from the same cloth. My temper's been tempered. Because you remember what temper I had? You're the, one, the only one in here, and that's a good thing. Uh... It's easy, Brother Clint, in our emotions to want to take harm and inflict damage on individuals. But that's not our warfare. We don't have victory in that. You'll never gain peace from God striving to have your way or your force against somebody else. The reason I read everything that I read before is you've got to learn to separate fact from emotion. Can I say there are a lot of things that I don't like, but that doesn't matter. If God established them as fact, uh, my flesh has to be put under subjection. Fact must rule. But in our warfare, we're not to slay cities and deal with all that stuff and everything. That's God's business. Our warfare is a whole different warfare. In order to have victory, we need not look outward, but inward. So real quickly, let me give you a couple of thoughts. We'll go to the house. I want to preach on the enemies within. The real warfare. The things that we need to destroy and, and get rid of and dispossess from ourselves if we're going to have victory. Can I say the first one's idleness? Most of our problem sits around because we get idle. The old adage is, uh, an idle mind is the devil's workshop. But when you're sitting around doing nothing, 
but putting your mind on nothing, people are dying and going to hell. We could spend that time praying. We can send, spend that time meditating on the Word of God. We can spend that time building ourselves up on our most holy faith uh, so that faith come by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. Uh, we can spend that time for good or we can just stay idle. The problem is idleness leads to laziness. And laziness leads to complacency. And the Lord said in Amos 6.12, Woe to them that are at ease in Zion. Idleness can be an enemy within. The good news is we live in a, in a day and age where, when you know society never sleeps, so you can be busy all the time. Can I say this? Our enemies also include insensitivity. And what I just said, that we live in a society that never sleeps, we live in a society that is a pressure cooker. And Brother Brian, good to see you, my friend. Love you. You got the gang? I don't love you that much. I'm going, I love you, Miss Noreen. How you doing? You ain't got the gang, do you? Uh, don't let him cough on you. All right. Uh, he had it. He don't have it no more. Sounds like he's still got a touch. Uh. But here's the thing. You can be at the shop, back there listening to music, and all you do back there while you're running the machine, all of a sudden the boss comes in, ticks you off, makes you mad. And it happens to be Wednesday, because usually that's when you, they're going to try and make you mad. And you come to church, you've had a bad day, and you've been made mad, and you come home, and you're wanting ham and, and green beans and potatoes, and she gave you frozen fish sticks, you know, and... It just it just been a bad day because she had a bad day too because she works the same place she had, she had to listen to you we crying complaining about the person she had shared office with so it's been a bad day she, she's looking at somebody like I might, I might have hit a nerve here I think I'm gonna camp <laughs> he's the boss she's well I know why she had a bad day yeah huh no I ain't gonna imagine that's my next point imagination no. No, and sensitivity. Now listen, you come in, you've had a bad day. All you want to do is get through those doors and hear from, from heaven. You need some help. And then all of a sudden, a smart aleck named Clint comes in and says something about your haircut. He's not, he's not being sensitive to the fact that you might be in a bad mood. It's difficult knowing what other people go through. But if we don't learn to discern the Lord, we can be insensitive. And we and Jess could say something to try and be funny. And that thing worked the other way. And all of a sudden, not only does his feelings get hurt because he had a bad day, but his feelings got hurt at church and he throws it in the town and says, I ain't going back to church no more. Now, you won't quit your job, but you'll quit God. I see that all the time. The boss won't initially made you mad, but because Brother Chad came in and made fun of your, you know, your, your, your truck instead of his Camaro or something, it just made you mad, and you quit church. Sometimes the insensitivity can be an enemy. Uh, Miss Marcy needs you to pray for her, but your insensitivity... Makes you want to watch the home home shopping network instead of praying for Miss Marcy. We've got to learn to be more sensitive. Be sensitive to the Holy Ghost when He's speaking. Because if we're not, if we're insensitive, it becomes an enemy. Can I say there's enemies? How about indulgences? You know, over there in First John chapter two talks about the lust of the eyes, the lust of flesh, the pride of life. If we're not too careful. Things of the world become more attractive and more important to us than things of God. And we indulge those things, but we grieve the Holy Ghost. Indulge it. Now listen, there's nothing wrong with some of the things out there. I'm glad we live in a day and age. Aren't you glad we got microwaves? Huh? Aren't you glad we can stream now? Anybody ever have one of the first VCR, one of them Betamaxes, weighed, weighed as much as a Volkswagen? You brought in, sat down on your TV... And it had a remote with a real long cord, and you thought you were somebody. Huh? Aren't you glad for some of the technology and some of the things that we're blessed with? 
But if you're not careful, you'll get so caught up in technology, you'll get so caught up in the trinkets, you'll get so caught up in all that, you'll indulge those things in your life. But you won't do anything with God. There are people that are here, the new iPhone's coming out. I don't know if one's coming out or not, but all of a sudden I just made that people putting it on their counter. Okay, I'm going to the Apple store. I'm going to wait six days so I, in line so I can get one. And then for the first six months, all they do is got to keep you sending them bug fixes. But people will not think twice spending, I don't know, how much is a new iPhone? Do you know? I don't know. I think it's your firstborn to buy one now. They'll give whatever it takes to have that new iPhone, but they won't give $10 to missions. Are you listening? Mm -mm. You talk to Brother A. We go to places uh, where people, $10 means whether or not they eat. And we just throw it away. Those indulgences can become enemies within. Here's a bad one. The I syndrome. I, 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 me, me, me. Middle letter of pride is I. Little letter of sin is I. Sometimes we get I syndrome. It's all about me. Me, myself, and I. You do know the essence of sin is my right to my claim to myself. That's the essence of sin. But can I say that the Bible makes it clear when we're born again that our life is no longer our own. We've been bought with a price. Uh, it's not I, but it's Christ that liveth in me. Uh, and yet, that ugly letter I can pop up. The preacher gives a Bible study. You can get angry. You didn't know he was going to be an illustration. Hmm? Huh? By the way, I did preach your message down there last week in Revival. I did. They loved it. Huh? Got a little loose on it. But anyway. Uh, eye syndrome can be a bad thing. Now, I'm glad we got enough pride to get out of bed and brush our teeth and some of us can comb our hair and do those kind of things. There's some pride that's good. You know, but there, that, that word pride usually is not dealing with good. God resisted the proud and give grace to the humble. And that eye syndrome, where it's all about me, huh? That's a dangerous thing. It could become an enemy. You know, I battle that thing. I'm going to be honest with you. In case you hadn't figured this out, I've got a little bit of a big ego. I've never had a problem where I needed somebody to come pat me on the back. I was raised an only child, you know, and I've told you this. You know, when I used to play Army with the little plastic, I never lost. Never lost the checkers, never lost it, because it was me versus me. I never lost. We used to set them army men up, and you play war, and you flip them off, and you're dead, you're dead, you're dead. I always won. Listen, I've got to keep that ego in check. If not, God's not going to get glory for my life. That's why on the way out, when you, when you thank me for the message on occasion, <clears throat> I won't let you. I always tell you, give God the glory. He's the one that gave me the intellect. He's the one that gave us the book. He's the one that saved me. He's the one that gave me the, uh, uh, the, the Word of God. He's the one that gave me the message. Uh, he's the one that gave me the ability to preach. Uh, he's the one that knew you needed whatever thought it was how that message. And He's the one through the Holy Ghost worked in your life. Uh, it's all Him be the glory. Uh, I never take credit for what God does. Uh, but if I don't keep that eyes and if I don't do like the Apostle Paul and die daily to that guy, be in trouble. There's the enemy within. Now listen, I don't want to make light of this. I'm trying to hurry so we can get the, the meeting for the homeless people and the rest of them can go home. There's the enemy of insecurity. Listen, we know that all of our rags are filthy rags. I mean, all of our righteousness are filthy rags. We know that within me dwelleth no good thing. We know those things. But sometimes we get so low in our self-esteem that we are robbing God of glory. We get so insecure in who we are that we don't allow Him to be who He is. Do you know why He gave you the Word of God? So you can have some promises to help you when you're facing those times when you don't think you're enough. Now, I understand, Brother Josh, you know, now, now listen to me. I understand your mama was a lot like me, but a lot, you know, you were a lot like me, but not quite as much as me. But I had a mama, you talk to Aunt Lynn, I could do no wrong in her eyes. 
I had no problem of a mama building me up, okay? But I know there are some parents out there that, that are not good to their children. And they tell them they'll never amount to anything and they'll never be good enough. And they'll never, and that, hey, listen, parents, listen to me. That travels with those people all of their lives. As parents, you need to do more than just put clothes on their back and food on their table. You need to help develop in them what they're going to be. You need to praise them. You need to love them. You need to show them uh, that love. And you need to uh, uh, build some self-esteem in them. But that hasn't always happened, especially from my generation and older. Uh, we were raised in a generation where the men went to work. It was the woman's job to take care of the kids. The men didn't have to, you know, the men did whatever they did. And, you know, usually the only time they was ever a part of the home was for discipline. But can I say, fathers be a real father. But there are people who are facing some insecurity things because of the way they were raised. We need to be sensitive to that. But listen to me, if you're one of those people, Jesus does love you. He really loves you. And he died for you. He rose again for you, but He has left you everything you need to be secure in Him. I'll never forget, there was a fellow one time, he blessed my heart. His, his father walked out on him before he was born. So by the world standards, he was always called a bastard. And by the law standard... A fatherless child could not even enter the tabernacle. But he said, happy day one day when he had a heavenly father came by and took him just like he was, saved him and changed him. He said, I didn't have one here on earth, but I got one in glory. Uh, and listen, uh, well, it'll help you if you realize... Uh, everything that maybe uh, hasn't gone right in here and in this life uh, in Christ it's all going to be made right one of these days uh, and he can do a work and he can help you and he can lift your spirit and he can be a, a father unto you uh, and he can uh, help you in those areas uh, Amen. but the truth of the matter is I've seen this Miss Brittany there are people sometimes that don't get help because they don't want help. Miss Michelle, I've seen people that they want to play a victim. And can I say, you can make a life, livelihood today out of playing the victim. But it's never going to help your esteem. But Christ will. When you realize you were good enough for Him, He did love you. And He is there for you. What well, can I say? Another enemy within is the enemy of indifference. That's a bad thing. I, I, I don't like being around people. If it's half full, they're saying it's half empty. And if it's black, they're saying it's white. And there's just some people, it, no matter what, they're indifferent. Raise one of them. No, I'm just teasing. Right, right. I had to lighten the mood right there. Uh, I just don't like being around indifferent people. They bring you down. Sometimes, if we're not careful, we can be negative. So we've got to ask God to help slay that enemy within. I don't want to be negative. I want to be a positive guy. I want to be a realist. I'm not foolish. I want to be real with this thing, but I want to have a good attitude. I want to have a good outlook. I want to be good to people. Last thing, I'll be done. That enemy within of insubordination. I don't want to I want to be what the Lord wants me to be. I don't want to be unfaithful. I don't want to always be buttoned up against you know what I've said. Jesus said, My sheep know my voice and they follow me. Sheep follow, goats butt. And I've seen that in churches all my life. Preachers say, I believe God wants us to do this and everybody say, Yeah, and then all, there'll be a goat somewhere. But preacher, that's gonna cost some money. Can I say I was reading today where God reminded the children of Israel that He opened up the rock and gushed out water for them, that He sent them manna from heaven, angel food, the psalmist called it, 
corn from heaven, the psalmist called it, that he sent them quail, fresh meat, that he just kept blessing and kept blessing and kept blessing. I don't know how many Jews were in the wilderness, but it was a bunch of them, and they never went hungry, they never went without. God met every need. Uh, hey, their shoes didn't wear out, their clothes didn't wear out. They walked around for 40 years, uh, never having a roof over their head, but God protected them. God was good to them. Uh, hey, uh, listen, I don't know how much a building's going to cost. I don't know how much uh, anything else is going to cost, but I know God's not bankrupt. Uh, I know God's always taking care of His people. Uh, hey, if we ever get to the place, we just get on God's plan, let God do it. Uh, there's no limit to what God can do. If He can open up a rock and feed a multitude of people, do you think God can't open up something and take care of us? All I'm saying, if you're not careful, you'll live around here like you're vexed because those things within you, you let, let take over you. Let the Spirit of Christ, which sealed you, the Holy Ghost sealed you until the day of redemption. Let the Holy Ghost lead you. Learn to walk in Him. Learn to follow Him. Learn to let Him give you assurances and give you help. Let Him take control over those things and give you victory. I want to live in victory, don't you? I don't like being a loser. Loser. I don't like that. But I'm glad I'm not a Clemson fan. Boy, did they look ugly the other night. Uh, uh. Listen, I don't like losers. That's why I don't have a team. I always just follow whoever won that week. Uh, but Adrian said he came here. He said he can go. He can root for the Reds. God help him. He can root for the Bengals, but he can't root for UK. He's a Virginia fan. Well, they got a schlacking the other day too, huh? Uh, but listen, why would you want to be a Christian loser? when Christ has already secured your victory. And I say, most of the time, we're looking to blame it on somebody else and the real enemies within. Learn to live in victory. It's well worth it. All right, I'm done. Let's all stand, Brother Clint, come get a song. Maybe you want to come and just thank the Lord for victory. Maybe tonight you want to come and just tell Him you love Him. Maybe tonight He's put something else on your heart you need to do. Just, you know, that's what we do. We mind the Lord. But don't leave out of here vexed. Leave out of here thankful and blessed. You can in Christ. They're picking out a song. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. Lord, I know I was too long tonight. But Lord, it's, it's always good being around you and the Word of God. Lord, over there in Acts, Paul preached at midnight. Lord, we just love you. Now, Lord, it's that time of service when you're dealing with hearts. Maybe you're dealing with something with folks we didn't even talk about tonight. Lord, give them some victory. Or just help somebody tonight. And God, I know there was some very little ever said about salvation tonight, but if there's somebody here tonight lost, I know the Holy Ghost can reveal to them that. I pray they come get born again. Lord, whatever anybody needs tonight, whatever you're dealing with them about, help them to come. We'll bless you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks to listeners like you, IBC has had over 100,000 views on our YouTube channel. If you haven't already, subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.